When the first Disneyland opened in 1955, California and the whole USA went crazy. It made all other amusement parks across the US and the world look silly and lame. By 1958, visiting Disneyland was the dream of every child in North America. Today, its branches around the world attract tens of millions of visitors every year. Hence, when a serious incident takes place at Disneyland, fans of the franchise go crazy because they never suspect that something at their favorite happy place, the happiest place on Earth, would go so bad. Luckily, fatalities at Disneyland in general, and the one in Anaheim, California in particular, are very rare. Even though nearly a billion people have visited the massive park since its inception, the first fatality at Disneyland Anaheim took place in 1964. And as you could probably guess, it involved a steel roller. The victim was Mark Maples, and this is his story. The mere thought of visiting Disneyland puts an immediate smile on most people's faces, regardless of their age. The franchise has become a legend and today boasts branches in many locations across the world, such as Paris, Florida, Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Shanghai. Believe it or not, regardless of which branch you visit, you will find these parks always crowded. They even have luxury hotels to accommodate long-distance and international visitors. As we said earlier, Mark Maples was the first victim ever at Disneyland Anaheim. He died while on the famous Matterhorn bobsled steel roller coaster, which opened in 1959 and is still operational to this day. Did you know that this roller coaster was the very first tubular steel coaster in the world? Did you also know that steel roller coasters are considered to be the most dangerous type of amusement ride? Even if we didn't know that, it's sort of crazy because nearly 500 incidents per year involve steel roller coasters, some resulting in serious injury or death. Let's get back to Mark's story. 15-year-old Mark Maples had a rather dull life because his parents were conservatives and members of an exclusive semi-religious secret society called the Elk Club that was and still is a little too intrusive in its members' lives and dictates how adult members should raise their children. The club is a little less crazy nowadays. However, back in the day since it was founded in New York in the mid-1980s and up to the 1990s, it was sort of a crazy or more racist to be specific. Nevertheless, they're none of our business, so let's focus on Mark's story. Mark's parents, Jack and La Bella, were quite dedicated to this club, and they even had Mark admitted to it, which meant that he had to often frequent it with his older brother Chris and his younger brother Anthony. Naturally, this made Mark's parents too protective, and thus their kids felt too restrained. And as all kids will always be kids, Mark was not happy with the rules and often vented by pulling some stunts and being a little mischievous, which is natural for a boy especially when he enters his teens, and impressing the girls and friends becomes a top priority. He was even called the daredevil by some people, which might explain why he was grounded by his parents for a whole week before visiting Disneyland on May 15th of 1964. By the way, he wasn't supposed to be visiting the park on that day because his parents sent him with his brother for an activity at the local elk club. Anyways, Mark and his brother skipped that activity, they hooked up with a few friends, and they headed to Disneyland for a day of fun. Which, let's face it, is way better than sitting in a windowless lodge and listening to some weirdly dressed guy or lady repeat some nonsense on why theme parks and non-Americans are bad and blah, blah, blah. Sadly, Mark should have listened to his parents that day because that visit to the park ended his life in a terrible and painful manner. His death marked the first fatality in Disneyland and nearly five years after the opening of the infamous Matterhorn roller coaster. Let's take a look at the incident's details. Around 1 p.m. on Friday, May 15th of 1964, Mark Maple's parents decided that their beloved boy had received enough punishment for something that he did a week earlier and decided that it's time for him to be ungrounded and sent to the Elk Club along with his brother Chris for a four hours pep talk. Mark happily agreed. He told them how sorry he felt about his misbehavior a week earlier and that he really liked going to the Elk Club to learn more about the evil of non-Americans and non-whites. No pun intended here, we're talking about the early 1960s here, so you know, just try to be faithful and whatnot. And in our own defense today, this club boasts two million members and is an exclusive white Americans members only fart -ternity. God, Dad. You know, we're not even gonna touch on that. They don't deserve our attention. Anyways, off he went with a big smile on his face, aware that his older brother Chris was just like him. He hated the Alt Club and will once again skip this nonsense and head for a fun activity along with some friends. By 3 p.m., Mark, Chris, and three other friends arrived at Disneyland in Anaheim, and they felt as if they just entered paradise. They grabbed some snakes, they tried some rides, and of course, they kept the big thrill for last. Around 6 p.m., the group headed for the final adrenaline rush shot. 
The Matterhorn was simply screaming their name and they couldn't say no. So the group sat in the six-seater carriage, snapped on their car-like safety seat belts, and waited for the 20 miles per hour madness to begin. Mark was sitting in the middle seat, and it was dark since the ride takes place mostly inside the tunnels of an artificial mountain. That was probably the reason why the rest of the group was still unable to tell what happened to Mark. They didn't get to see what happened until it was too late. A couple of cute girls who mingled with Mark earlier as they waited in the line at the loading platform were in a different carriage right behind Mark and the rest of the other boys. As soon as the carriage descended the mountain and hit the maximum speed of 20 miles per hour, Mark, being a daredevil, also wanting to impress those pretty girls right behind him, decided to stand up, which, as we all know, is the equivalent of suicide, regardless of the ride type, regardless of the ride height. Like many roller coasters, this ride was also bumpy in many areas. The walls and even the ceiling are quite close to the carriages. Thus, standing up or extending one's body over the edge can lead to horrific incidents. Mark suddenly fell out of the carriage as he lost his balance and he hit his head on the concrete with a very, very hard thud. His injury was quite horrific. The impact was so hard that it even made a loud thud that was heard by the other boys in the carriage, despite the loud, noisy roller coasters. One of Mark's friends sort of saw a shadow of the ordeal because Mark bumped into him as he fell. He freaked out. He tried to tell the rest of the group that Mark fell and he was probably hurt. However, communicating on a fast, loud, and mostly dark ride is almost impossible. Nevertheless, the ride was soon over. The carriage stopped, and the boys tried to tell the staff about the incident, but such an incident had never occurred before. The staff didn't believe him. However, 30 seconds later, the girls who were in the carriage behind the boys arrived at the platform and confirmed that Mark fell. He was lying injured next to the track. So the ride was stopped. The staff rushed to the incident scene, and they found Mark on the side of the track, unconscious, with a pool of blood under his head. The police and the ambulance crew soon arrived. Mark was still alive, but... Sadly, his injuries were very severe, and his brain was damaged. He remained in critical condition on a ventilator for four days, and then he died. Sadly, while Mark was in a coma, and before investigators reached a conclusion, the media went on a wild, rather negative speculative fiasco, once accusing the rest of the group of hazing Mark, and then the next day, accusing Mark of being reckless, and, and so on and so forth. Detectives who investigated the incident took the roller coaster in slow motion to try to determine what had happened. They questioned the group of boys, staff, and two girls. A week after the incident, the police announced that they couldn't come up with a definite answer to what had happened. They decided that the boys' statements and evidence had refuted the hazing allegations, and thus, most likely the scenario is that, that Mark did stand up to enhance the experience or impress some girls. Thus, Mark Maple's death was declared purely accidental. Are you a frequent visitor to Disneyland? Well, what do you think of their steel roller coasters? Are they too bumpy when with the safety belts or bars? Do you think they can be easily opened? Essentially, do you feel safe?